In this video, we'll show you how to assemble and install a Hunter ST1600 Synthetic Turf Irrigation Kit. This all-in-one irrigation system is designed for cooling, cleaning, and flushing synthetic turf fields. The kit contains the most robust rotor on the market. It's ideal for large synthetic turf irrigation applications, such as football, field hockey, and soccer fields. Designed for seamless installation, powerful performance, and easily servicing, the ST kit is the most reliable, gear-driven synthetic turf system on the market. Throughout this video, we'll discuss the kit components and the steps required to assemble and install them. The primary steps are 1. Install the vault 2. Assemble the rotor and manifold assembly 3. Install the internal components in the vault Kit Components The ST1600 Synthetic Turf Irrigation Kit is composed of several components. To begin, let's review the parts of the kit. First is the composite vault, which houses all the kit components. It's a four-piece polymer concrete cover set with cast-in openings to support rotor lateral thrust. The cover allows for access to the rotor, quick coupler valve, and solenoid actuator for on, off, or automatic irrigation. The rotor allows for irrigation up to 165 feet, 50 meters, with enough pressure and water flow. It mounts into the vault with a hunter hanger bracket. For seamless integration into the field, the infill barrier system fits onto the rotor's rubber cover. The system's control valve is an ultra-low pressure loss 3-inch valve grooved with fitting connections. It includes and is connected to the remote on-off auto selector switch and solenoid manifold assembly. Next is the isolation valve. This is a butterfly valve used to manually shut off the water supply to the kit for maintenance and servicing. It comes with grooved Victaulic fittings, which have a 500 PSI, 35 bar, 3500 kPa rating, to connect the rotor and control valve to the manifold inlet. It also includes a manual brass ball valve to drain the system. The isolation valve connects to the 3-inch, 7.6 centimeter stainless steel flexible inlet hose which connects to the incoming water supply line. Two adjustable manifold support blocks are required in one vault. They bear the weight of the manifold and allow for elevation adjustment to properly position the rotor and kit components inside the vault. To spot water the field, the quick coupler provides quick access to water for cleaning or cooling. To securely mount the quick coupler to the vault, Install the quick coupler support bracket to the inner lip of the vault. Installing the vault. The vault is the first item to prepare and install. Made from construction grade fiberglass material, the vault houses all the kit components. It's 24 inches deep, 36 inches long, and 36 inches tall. The body of the vault weighs 170 pounds and the complete vault with the covers weighs a total of 320 pounds. The vault has two ports for easy access to the quick coupler and the on-off auto selector switch. The elevation to the grade of the vault must be precise. It's determined by the field and irrigation specifications. In many installations, the vault's elevation is specified such that the upper arm of the vault is level with the upper rim of the tack glue board surrounding the field. The type of material, if any, that attaches to the vault's upper surface may also affect the vault's elevation. This can include the field's synthetic material or the adjacent running track material. To begin installation, configure the vault according to the specifications provided by the irrigation consultants. It must rest upon a compacted base material per the field specifications. For the vault to drain properly, it needs access to the drainage system. The drainage system must be lower in elevation than the vault's 36-inch, 91-centimeter depth to keep water from pooling inside the vault. If the vault is set directly on gravel within the drainage system, the gravel should be compacted and the vault should be set upon six or more bricks for stabilization. After leveling the vault, you may want to pour a concrete curb around the outside of the base and the inside corners for stabilization. 
Preparing the incoming plumbing location. When installing the kit, it's crucial to prepare the incoming plumbing location properly. If done correctly, you should be able to easily level the rotor using the predetermined amount of fittings. The first step is to prepare the depth and location of rigid piping connected to the inlet of the manifold. The manifold's inlet is centered along the side wall of the vault, approximately 24 to 30 inches, 61 to 76 centimeters from the top of the vault. While this is the standard angle for the manifold, it can be pivoted within the vault. This makes it possible to adjust from minor angular variances in the rigid sub-mainline piping that will be attached to the manifold. The main line should also be set at this approximate depth, unless specified otherwise. Once the incoming water supply line and flexible hose location are known relative to the manifold, use a 6-inch, 15-centimeter hole saw to create an access port in the vault sidewall. Lastly, it's important to note that the flexible stainless steel hose will extend out 24 inches, 61 centimeters from the vault to the main line. The pipe between the stainless steel hose from the main line should be at least 6 inches, 15 centimeters long to allow for easy positioning. Manifold Components The ST Systems Manifold is made up of the STV30KV control valve and the STBVF30K isolation valve kit. The manifold controls and supports the long-range rotor and provides a point of connection for a quick coupler and drain valve. The manifold assembly components are made with 3-inch, 7.6-centimeter grooved Victaulic-type fittings. These fittings join pipes of various materials across multiple fire protection, industrial, and commercial applications. Made of cast, ductile iron, and pressure-responsive synthetic rubber for the gasket, these fittings are extremely rigid and have operating pressures up to 500 psi, 35 bar, 3500 kPa. They have great joint integrity and can withstand thermal changes, seismic events, and different settlements. Victaulic fittings add to the robustness of the kit. The isolation valve kit includes one each of the following. A galvanized grooved male BSP rotor adapter fitting a galvanized grooved 90-degree elbow fitting, a galvanized grooved T-fitting, an epoxy-coated grooved butterfly valve, a galvanized grooved at 1 inch, 2.5 centimeter female NPT drain plate, a galvanized male NPT plug, a brass 1 inch, 2.5 centimeter female NPT ball valve drain valve, and six galvanized grooved couplings. When assembling the grooved Victaulic type fittings to create the ST manifold, approved pipe gasket lubricant can be used to aid the assembly process, but it's not required. First, slide the gasket over the end of the first fitting to establish the connection. The gasket must not protrude or extend beyond the edge of the fitting. Place the second fitting in position against the first fitting. Hold the fittings together in this position for the next step. Slide the gasket over and center it between the grooves of the two fittings you want to connect. Press each coupling half onto the gasket and squeeze them together. Next, fasten the bolts and nuts to the coupling. Tighten evenly, alternating sides until securely fastened. Coupling halves must come together and make complete contact. Be sure the nuts are facing upward for ease of future service. To prevent rust, you may also want to apply grease.
flexible hose and access through the vault. The ST Kit's flexible stainless steel hose connects the incoming water supply to the manifold. The flexible hose adjusts for minor elevation and alignment differences between the manifold and incoming water supply line. Install the hose to the manifold with the provided coupling and gasket. Secure it to the inlet side of the butterfly valve using the same steps for assembling the manifold with Victaulic fittings. Next, wrap the hose with 0.25 mm thick plastic pipe wrapping tape to protect it from corrosive soil conditions. Please note that this step cannot be performed when the rotor and manifold assembly are in the vault. If you've already lowered it, simply bring it out to install the tape. When the rotor, manifold, and stainless steel assemblies are installed in the vault and connected to the water supply line, the stainless steel hose should appear smooth and untwisted between the incoming water supply line and the manifold. If necessary, loosen the coupling between the flexible hose and the butterfly valve. Then, remove any twist in the flexible hose and retighten when complete, attaching the rotor and quick coupler supply line to the manifold assembly. After attaching the flexible hose, install the rotor to the manifold assembly. First, apply Teflon tape or paste to the adapter's threads. Next, thread the rotor to the adapter to provide a watertight seal. Then, connect the adapter to the manifold with the coupler and gasket for the Victaulic fittings. After the rotor is attached, the quick coupler supply line can be installed to the manifold. Apply Teflon tape to the threads of the supply line, then install it to the manifold. Configuring and positioning the adjustable support stance. Once the rotor, manifold, and stainless steel hose are assembled, you'll need to install the support stance. Two adjustable stands are required to support the weight of the manifold. Place one support stand under one of the couplings attached to the isolation valve. Position the other support stand under the coupling between the elbow and control valve. Place both adjustable support stands on a concrete support pad, like a 16 inch by 16 inch by two inch, 41 centimeter by 41 centimeter by five centimeter support block for stabilization. First, prep the soil where the support blocks will be placed on opposite ends inside the vault by compacting the soil. Next, lower the support blocks into the vault. After the vault area, support blocks, and support stands are prepped, place the support stands on the support blocks. The top of the support stands should be approximately 29 inches, 74 centimeters, from the top of the vault. If needed, raise or lower the support stands to attain the correct measurement. To adjust the support stands, loosen the nuts on the top of the black rubber support stand base. Raise the nuts as far as possible and then press downward on the support stand's metal rail until it stops. Installing and adjusting the rotor, manifold assembly, and rotor hanger bracket. After placing the adjustable support stands in the vault, it's time to install the rotor and manifold assembly. Use two people to lower the rotor and manifold assembly onto the support stands. If a slight adjustment is needed, you can raise or lower the support stands with these assemblies on them. With the rotor inside the vault, install the rotor hanger bracket onto the vault to secure the rotor in place. There are two halves of the bracket with the supplied bolts and nylock nuts to make the bracket. Set one half with the protruding hanger arms facing upward under the flange of the rotor. Engage the arms on the rim of the vault. After the first half is loosely fitted, install the second half. Make sure the arms are engaged to the rim of the vault under the rotor flange. Once the brackets are loosely fitted to the vault and rotor, slide the bolts through the brackets pre-drilled holes to connect the two bracket pieces. Tighten the bolts and nylock nuts to loosely grip the rotor. Keep the brackets loose until the infill barrier system is installed and the rotor's elevation is set. Installing the infill barrier system to the rotor. All in-vault installations require the infill barrier system to blend the ST system with the surrounding field. The infill barrier system also creates a snug fit between the rotor and the vault cover, allowing for smoother operation. For infill type synthetic sports fields, the infill barrier system retains much of the infill material on the rotor's logo cap area, as well as the area surrounding the rotor. 
The infill barrier walls should be below the level of infill material to promote a safe transition between the rotor's pop-up and the surrounding area. Do not apply adhesive or glue to the infill barrier system when installing the rotor. All parts must remain movable to allow for rotor servicing. First, install the ring on the flange of the rotor. Use your fingers to pull and place each retaining segment of the ring under the flange. After all retaining segments have been positioned, check to make sure they are completely under the rotor's flange. Next, install the cup over the rotor's green logo cap. To do this, lift the logo cap and insert a piece of wood underneath. Place the cup over the edge of the logo cap. Use your fingers to pull and place each retaining segment of the cup under the logo cap's outer edge. After all retaining segments have been positioned, recheck to make sure they're completely under the logo cap. Carefully lower the logo cap and cup assembly. Take care not to disengage the cup from the logo cap. Lastly, check to make sure the infill barrier system cup and ring are aligned. Adjusting the rotor elevation and installing the cover material to the infill barrier system. Before attaching synthetic, track, or concrete material to the vault, cover, and infill barrier system, trim the walls of the infill barrier system to create a flat upper surface if using non-infill type material. If an infill type material is being used, trimming is not required. Adjust the upper flat surface elevation to the same elevation as the vault's upper surface. Do this by maneuvering the rotor into place. This step allows for seamless integration of the ST system into the field and keeps it from becoming a tripping hazard. Once the elevation is set, tighten the rotor hanger bracket to lock the rotor into position. If a pad or synthetic turf material must be attached to the infill barrier system, it needs to be 14 and 3 8 inches, 36.5 centimeters in diameter. After a piece of cover material is cut, Use the Hunter-approved adhesive to attach the material to the infill barrier system cup. Installing the Quick Coupler Piping, Quick Coupler, and Quick Coupler Bracket. Quick couplers allow fast access to water while maintaining in-ground durability and vandal resistance. A Quick Coupler Valve is a great tool to use when the rotor does not need to be turned on to irrigate a large area, and it's only needed for spot watering in small areas. The quick coupler inlet piping must be plumbed to align with the quick coupler's 7-inch, 18-centimeter diameter quick access port in the vault's cover. If the quick coupler is too low, it will be impossible to attach the key to the quick coupler. Before assembling the parts to install the quick coupler, apply Teflon tape to the threads of a 1-inch by 18-inch, 2.5-centimeter by 46-centimeter, Schedule 80 PVC or metal nipple. Then thread the quick coupler to the nipple. Next, thread the nipple with the quick coupler attached to it on the supply line. Once the quick coupler is installed, it can be mounted to the vault with the quick coupler bracket. Mount the bracket to the vault directly below the quick coupler access port. When installing the quick coupler to the bracket, it's important to set the top of the quick coupler less than a half inch, 1.3 centimeters, below the underside of the main vault cover to allow for key activation from above. Mount the bracket to the inner lip of the vault and tighten the included bolts until the quick coupler is secured. Lastly, route and install the drain valve piping and attach the brass drain valve. Make sure the drain valve is the lowest piping within the vault. Installing the remote on-off auto selector switch and solenoid assembly. The selector switch allows the user to control the kit automatically from an irrigation controller or manually from the switch. To install the switch, make sure it's positioned directly below an access port in the vault's cover set. Using a 5 16 inch, 0.8 centimeter masonry drill bit, drill two pilot holes, one inch, 2.5 centimeters deep, in the sidewall of the vault. The pilot holes should be one inch, 2.5 centimeters apart. After drilling the holes, mount the switch with the supplied hardware and bolts. Lastly, Connect the solenoid using the recommended high-quality 3M DBRY wire connectors. Connecting the control tubing to the control valve. After installing the selector switch, insert the supply tubing from the switch into the control valve. This allows you to turn the valve on and off, either manually from the switch or automatically from the controller. 
On the control valve, you'll find two fittings. One fitting is on the inlet side of the valve, and the other is in the center of the valve. Each fitting comes from the factory with a black protective dirt plug. To remove the plug, press downward on the collet ring at the top of the fitting while pulling the plug upward and out of the fitting. To connect the tubing to the fitting, simply press the tube into the fitting until it stops. Pull gently outward to confirm the tube is locked into the fitting. Perform these two steps with the blue color-coded tube to the blue color-coded fitting and the red color-coded tube to the red color-coded fitting. If you need to remove a tube from a fitting, simply press down on the collet ring at the top of the fitting while pulling the tube up and out of the fitting. Installing the tack glue board. After backfilling around the vault, install a tack glue board around the vault's perimeter. This allows you to securely attach the synthetic material in this area. The synthetic material rests on compacted field-based soil, and depending on the specification, it may be attached with tack nails, glue, or both. The most common tack glue board construction material is Trex 2 inch by 4 inch, 5 centimeter by 10 centimeter lumber. A close fitting frame design is ideal. Install the tack glue board around the vault's exposed upper rim with adhesive between the frame and vault. It should be equal in elevation to the vault's perimeter rim. Setting the rotor's arc orientation and adjusting the arc. Now that the internal and external components are installed, turn on the system to verify functionality with the selector switch. Next, set the rotor arc. The rotor has an arc range of 40 to 360 degrees. It also has a ratcheting feature, so the rotor can be rotated toward the playing field. While operating, push the rotor forcefully toward the intended irrigation area. The rotor will ratchet unless the arc adjustment clips interfere with the reversing trip arm on the back of the gear drive. Slide the arc adjusting clips, if needed, to move the rotor to the intended irrigation area. To adjust the arc, activate the rotor and slide the arc adjustment clips. This allows you to set the arc to the intended irrigation area. Move the trip arm on the back of the gear drive manually to speed up the process. Final kit adjustments. Before completing the installation of the ST1600 kit, do one last check of the vault, manifold, rotor assembly, fittings, and brackets. Verify that the bolts are tight and the components are positioned properly in the vault. After making any final adjustments, enjoy the benefits of an automatic synthetic turf irrigation system.